talking about is so much it's a, that's a great benefit you know that i can jump on and be like yeah i can totally help out so I, what my plan is today might be a little different than what joni has been doing i may not do the tobatas at the end but it'll still be a little bit of an interval training um i do suggest you have a strap of some sort to you know use for pulling this pulling motion is very important and i don't have weights here so um, if you want to use weights i'll offer that as we go toward the end so i'm going to start out with mobility a little bit of yoga and then core strengthening with the pilates then move to some strength training specifically for lower body where all your big muscle groups are and some um a lot for your back for pulling motions and for your what i call anti-gravity muscles all right so i need to grab one thing and my strap i'm gonna move um hopefully everything can everyone hear me pretty pretty well thank you because i am on a hot spot um and I have my external device. So if anything goes awry, somebody speak up. I'm gonna mute everyone. And we're gonna start on all fours. So just make sure you have your strap close by. And thank you for those of you who do have your camera on so I can see somewhat and help to cue a little more specifically. So come on down onto all fours, hands and knees. And start first with cat cow. Cat cow is an excellent movement to do every day. Moves your spine. So when your hands are under your shoulders, knees are under your hips, inhale, lift your chin and tail, and then exhale and round through your spine. Do that just a few times. This is also to connect to your breath. So it's always a deep breath in as you lift your chin and your tail, and a full breath out as you round and flex your spine. Now here, don't want to be too aggressive, especially going through the center position. You want to find as much length as you possibly can. That's the most important, this neutral position right in the middle. In fact, let's all meet there now. So head in line with your spine, spine nice and long. Bring your knees together, spread your fingers wide. Now, if there's too much weight on your hands here, move your hips back. In fact, feel that little shift. If you shift back, weight off your hands. If you shift forward, weight onto your hands. So you get to decide where your hips are so that you definitely feel some strength in your arms, but no you know, tension in your wrists, all right? And then press down strong, lift your right knee to the side, keep your heel curled tight to your bottom and circle your knee around. Nice. So these are hydrants. And it's also almost like cat cow. This is such an important movement to keep your back healthy is to mobilize through your hip. Now keep your head in line with your spine, breathe deeply. Try to make the biggest circle you possibly can with your knee. And then reverse in the other direction. Big, big circles. Like you have a laser pointer on your knee and you're trying to carve the biggest or draw the biggest circle you can. Nice. And now step that foot out to the side, out to the right. So probably feel a little bit of um, you know, a stretch in your inner thigh, get your foot in line with your knee, press into your right hand, open your left arm up and twist, and then reach that arm through the hole. So it helps to inhale here as you open and exhale as you reach through the hole. Try to press down into your right foot pretty firmly and you'll have most of the body weight in your left knee. Open and close. Do that one more time open and close. Now bring your hand back in and come all the way up tall into kneeling. So you have that right leg out to the side still. Reach your left arm up in the air and side bend up and over. Take about three deep breaths here. Now when you side bend, you're standing strong again out of your left knee. You want to press down into your left knee and lift way up. It's not this big collapsing. It's more like you know, a big arc. One more deep breath here. Joanne, that's lovely. All right, come on back down, bring your hands down, bring your right knee in, and let's switch sides. So reconnect first through your hands. Feel especially your fingerprints. Be very light in the heel of your hand. You can move your hips back if your wrists are not happy, but do try 
to feel the strength in your arms, all right? Lift your left knee high to the side and circle your knee around. And remember, you're trying to get it into your belly, past your other thigh, high out back behind you. And it wouldn't go too fast. You can certainly pick up the pace here, but the first few circles, you wanna have them kind of slow. So you notice the spots, like the sticky spots. Let's reverse a few times the other direction. You don't wanna skate through those sticky spots. This Typically, it's high to the side and way out back. Those are the most important, side and out back. Feel the muscles in the outside of your hip and your butt because those are big anti-gravity muscles. Those are your muscles used in balance, and the muscles to keep you upright. Now step the left foot out to the side. Get a good position with your foot. You can make, you know, turn it out a little bit. Just make sure it's pressing down flat and your knee is not locked. Now press into your left fingers, open your right arm up and weave it through the hole. Helps to inhale as you open and exhale as you breathe, as you um, twist. Make sure you're breathing deeply. So don't fret over like, how am I supposed to be breathing? Just make sure you're breathing. Let's do this one more time. Inhale as you open and exhale as you close. Good. Bring your hand back and come all the way up tall. And when you come up tall, just, you know, the hips are open here. So when you um, lift up standing out of that knee, press your hips a little bit forward so that this hip joint is wide open. Reach your right arm up and stretch over. Make sure it feels like you're reaching kind of like, you know, if due north is directly above you, this would be, you know, northwest, I suppose. But it's this big up and over arc. One more deep breath here. Fabulous. Come on back to center. Lower your hands. Bring your knees back in. Now this opposite hand, a leg and arm. So right arm and left leg reach out and then exhale as you lower. Inhale as you reach the other arm and out, leg out. Exhale as you lower. As you alternate back and forth here, I mentioned earlier, the length in your spine is the most important thing. So try to keep your spine really still. No arching and no rounding. Keep your head in line with your spine and let the arm and the leg move freely. So if your hips are level and your shoulders are level, you move from your center, you initiate it from your core muscles and the arm and leg should feel pretty light. Now I know this looks like a pretty simple movement. Again, some of the simple things in life are the most important. This turns on all of the muscles up the back of your spine, the most important stabilizer muscles. Now the next time your right arm and your left leg are out there, hold. Remember, if there's too much weight in your hand, shift your hips back a little bit so you're pressing down more into the knee and a little bit less in the hand. You build strength in that shoulder and wrist and elbow slowly. Take one more deep breath here and then lower. We'll hold the other side for a few breaths. Opposite arm and leg reach out. Shift your weight if you need to. Make your spine as long as you possibly can. So it's like a long neck turtle coming out of its shell. That's a difficult movement in the spine. It's, it's just it's elongation, it's traction. And here you're out of vertical gravity so you can continue to work to reach back through the leg and forward through the top of your head to feel long. Great, lower your hand, lower your knee. Now sit your hips back towards your heels. Walk your fingers over to one diagonal and stretch really long through both arms. Take a very deep breath in. Exhale all the air out over to the other diagonal. Stretch out really long, again, through both arms. Deep breath in and exhale. Now come back to center, lift into down dog. Tuck your toes and rise up. When your hips lift up and back, and they keep that length you just felt in both sides of your body when we did the side stretch, you wanna have it here. Again, if there's too much weight in your hands, bend your knees, shift your hips back, You'll feel a little less weight in your hands and more in your, your feet. Press straight down with your hands to help build strength in your lats. Take a very deep breath in. Exhale out through your mouth. Let's do that again. Deep breath in through your nose. All the air out through your mouth. 
Now walk your feet up to your hands into a forward fold. Fix your feet so they're parallel to each other, about a hand's width in between. Get your belly on your thighs and wrap your arms around the back of your legs. Give yourself a hug. Bend your knees as much as you need to. This is the most important thing to, to learn in with low bone density is to hinge at your hips, okay, not your waistline. So your spine, again, is very, very long. Take one more deep breath in here. And then bring your hands to your hips. Point your elbows up in the air. Bend your knees. Lift your head so your head is in line with your spine. You're looking straight down at the ground. Now use your butt to lift you straight up and stand tall. Nice. We'll do a sun breath. As you inhale, open your arms wide, stretch up. As you exhale, fold right back over. You're hinging at your hips, belly to your thighs. Inhale, come up halfway. Your spine is long. Exhale as you fold your belly to your thighs. Open your arms wide, press through your heels, lift. Maybe a little back bend here, and then bring your hands home. Let's do this two more times, okay? Deep breath in, inhale up. Exhale out to fold over, belly on your thighs. Inhale, lift with a very long spine. Use your butt, exhale and fold. Open your arms, press through your heels to come all the way up. Maybe a little back bend. And then exhale, bring your hands home to your heart. Let's go one more time, okay? Inhale, stretch up. Out to fold over. Keep your spine long. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale as you fold. Reverse, press through your heels. Out to come all the way up. Little back bend. And bring your hands home to your heart. Nice. Now, separate your feet about as wide as your mat. And turn your toes out so you have about 10 and 2. Bend your knees so you're in a, like a wide squat. And when you're hit, you can have hands on your knees, it's perfect. Here, make sure you again feel long spine. That's going to be your common, you know, thread throughout the entire class. Really long spine. When you bend your knees and you drop your bottom down, keep your knees stacked over your ankles. And you probably feel a little inner thigh stretch here. Also, want to feel strength in the outside of your hips. Now, press into your heels and come back up. Now let's do about six of these. Inhale, bend as deep as you can. Exhale and press to come up. As you bend, your knees will open wide. As you come up, your knees pull toward each other. So feel knees pulling apart from each other, knees pulling toward each other. Do that two more times. If you can let your arms open as your knees open and then pull your hands in as they close. Inhale as you open, exhale as you close. One more. Inhale as you open, exhale as you close. Now, I'm going to keep the legs. I'm going to change the arms. Bring the back of your hands toward each other. Bend your knees. Your thumbs will go to between your legs. Now, when you open, rotate so your thumbs point back. So now you're rotating at the shoulders, back of the hands toward each other, and palms face each other when you're overhead. Inhale as you come on down. Exhale as you open up. Now, if the arm movement is too much, keep your hands on your knees. Keep your spine very, very long. Rotate the arms in, that's internal rotation of the shoulder. Rotate the arms out, that's external rotation. Do this three more times. Lower and open. One more or two more. Lower and open. One more time. Back of the palms together and palms face each other. Beautiful. Lower your arms, step to the front of your mat. Take a deep breath in, exhale and fold all the way over. Now step your right leg back into a lunge. Lower your right knee to the ground, top of the right foot presses down. Climb up onto your front thigh, you're in a knee down lunge. But let your hips sink low, reach your right arm up next to your ear, and you can press with the left hand on the left knee so you have a little bit of a back bend. Back bending, so important, so important. Lift up, up, up out of your hips so that your waistline feels really long on both sides. Take one more deep breath. And then lower your hands, lift your back knee, hold that high lunge. Now, if the back knee um, feels better to you to keep it down, you can absolutely keep it down. With your fingers lightly touching the ground here, get a good position with your lunge. 
If it's available, lift your fingers off the ground and then open your arms wide in T. Rotate your thumbs up and try to lift your belly a little bit off your front thigh. And again, if that's too much, you either keep your fingers down or you lower the back knee. Here, a long spine. Stretch out through the top of your head. Reach really wide through your fingers. Take one more full breath. And then lower your hands and step back into plank. You can have plank with knees up or knees down. If the wrists are not comfortable here, you can lower onto your elbows. In fact, let's all go there. Lower your knees, lower your elbows. Make sure your elbows are directly under your shoulders. Keep knees down for a few breaths here. <laughs> Fix your spine so that you feel as long in your, especially in your low back, as long as you can. Most times that means you need to pull your pubic bone a little bit toward your nose. So just a slight, it's not like you're tucking and rounding your spine. It's like an energetic line that comes from your pubic bone up to your nose. Your low belly is really strong. If you can lift your knees, lift your knees. Now only three times, let your shoulder blades come together and press your shoulder blades apart. Do that again. Shoulder blades together, shoulder blades apart. One more time, together and apart. Lower your knees. Climb up onto your hands, lift on the hips up and back into down dog and take a very deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Again, deep breath in, out through your mouth. Make your waistline longer, deep breath in, out through your mouth. With as few steps as possible, walk your feet up to your hands into forward fold. I get the hip hinge again. The most important thing to learn in all movement is hinge at your hips. That means your belly is on your thighs. Bend your knees as much as you need to to get your belly on your thighs. Now this time, step your left leg back into lunge. Lower your left knee. Climb up onto your right thigh into a knee down lunge. Lovely. Let your hips sink low. Reach your left arm up next to your ear. So you push on your right thigh and lift, and I mean lift like you mean it, like, like there's a, a traction, someone holding on to your wrist, lifting you up, up, up out of your hips and maybe a little back bend. Not that you fall back, but you're lifting up to go back. Take one more deep breath. And then bring your hands down to either side of your front foot. Lift your back knee and hold your lunge. You, remember, you build strength incrementally, so don't be thinking that you need to jump to the next step, right? But there's a ton of strength right here. You gotta press strong through this back leg. When the heel reaches back, the, you're, it's almost like a human cannon. Your head shoots forward. Lightly touch with your fingers, and when you're ready, lift your fingers off the floor. That's a big change. Open your arms wide when you're ready. Remember, don't force the next step. Be willing to grow in stages. Spread your fingers, your thumbs point up. Maybe you lift your belly off your front thigh and take three deep breaths. There's this ton of strength that you build in stillness. Nice. And then slowly lower your hands and step back one more time into plank. Now your choice, you can lower onto your elbows again if you have straight strong ar or straight arms, hands down, you got to push the floor away. Actually, in either position, whether your elbows are down or your hands are down, push the floor away. It's like you're pressing the back of your heart up to the ceiling or the sky. Now your heels press straight back. Remember that line of energy from your pubic bone? Pull your pubic bone toward your nose. Just more energetically to engage those muscles versus, you know, moving the bones. Take one more deep breath. And then lower your knees and sit back, stretch. Keep your hands right where they were. When you pull your hips back, you get this nice long line from your hips to your fingertips. Take one more deep breath here. 
and then pull yourself forward and have a seat behind your feet. So I'm going to shift to Pilates, okay, or Pilates inspired because of the conversation we had at the beginning about low bone density. I'm not going to do any flexion. So from this seated position, let's find the long spine that I mentioned. Hands behind your thighs, hinge back, and as soon as you lean back, there's a tendency to kind of collapse, okay? Stay long, so when you come back up tall, feel your sitting bones. So you're standing out of your sitting bones. When you lean back, you're actually a little behind your sitting bones. And imagine the lap belt in your car. You know, when you tighten up your seat belt in your car, it's snug across your low belly. You have muscles that do the same exact thing. Now with your hands behind your thighs, pull. Pull pretty strong. You're trying to lift up out of your hips, engage your low seatbelt muscles, and pull with your arms. Now root your heels down into the ground. Hold all those internal actions and let some of these really deep stabilizer muscles that wrap your spine fire up. Heels press down, pull with your hands, lift through the crown of your head and tighten up your low belly. Nice. And then release all of that and take your time to lower onto your back. Bend your knees with your feet flat. Now a little pelvic rocks here. This is a lot like cat cow. Again, a very healthy movement. Rock your hips towards you. You lengthen your low back. And when you press your low back into the mat here, you can feel those low seatbelt muscles that I mentioned. Keep those engaged and come back to center with your hips neutral. So now you have the natural curve in your low back. That is super important. We wanna figure out the muscles that help to support that curve. Float your right knee over your right hip. With your right hand on the front of your thigh, push. Push really strong. So you're pressing your hand into your thigh. This is an isometric action. Isometric means there's muscular engagement, but there's no joint movement. Press really as strong as you possibly can. You're gonna feel hopefully everything deep inside around your core muscles and your shoulder girdle engage. Now lower that foot and do the same thing on the left. Bring your left knee up and press pretty strong. Take two more deep breaths in here. You still have the natural curve in your low back and your low seatbelt muscles, right? Your low, it's, a, it's abdominal bracing. Everything is braced. Now bring the right knee up, cross your wrists and press with both hands. Press firmly. Take two more deep breaths. Now press your thighs together. Keep all those muscles engaged that you just felt. Bring your arms long at your sides. Keep your spine long on the ground and begin to pump your arms pretty vigorously up and down just above your abdominal wall. If you'd like, you can reach your legs out long at a high diagonal. Now the pumps are up above your, your belly and they're vigorous. Pump from your upper back. Press your thighs firmly together. Deep breath in and deep breath out. We've got about five more breaths. Keep the pumps really strong. Press your head back into the ground. Pull your belly button in and up. One more deep breath. Exhale all the air out. That's really important. Empty the air. Bend your knees into your chest. Now slide your left leg out long on the ground. Reach your right leg straight up in the air. Press your arms down. Pilates is always more about what's not moving than what is moving. Okay, press your arms into the ground. You're gonna feel the whole backside of your body engage. Cross the right leg over, round, and lift it up. Cross around and lift it up. When the leg crosses over your midline, you have to work to keep the hips still so the more you cross the leg, the more it's gonna challenge you to keep pulling your hip down. One more big circle here and pause. Reverse, a little outside your body, across your body and up. Out, around and up. Out, around and up. Your goal is to keep everything on the ground perfectly still. 
perfectly still. And of course, keep breathing deeply. And then pause at the top. Walk your hands up the back of your leg. Pull your leg toward you in a hamstring stretch. Now make sure if this is too much, you know, you bet you could have your hands behind your thigh with the knee bent. You could also bend your bottom leg. The most important thing is to keep your low back, you know, the natural curve there and keep your low belly engaged. Take one more deep breath. And then bend your knee, slide your right leg out long, bring your left knee in and give it a hug. Send your left leg up in the air. Press your arms down, down, down. Cross your left leg over, around, and lift it up. Remember, what's on the ground is more important than what's happening with the leg that is moving. The only reason you're moving that leg in the air is to challenge your stability to keep your body still. So you can challenge your stability either with a bigger circle or with a faster circle. Let's reverse but you only add, you know, intensity after you're sure that everything on the ground is perfectly still. Take two more deep breaths. And then pause, bring the leg towards you, whether the knee is slightly bent or leg is long. You're trying to find the hamstring stretch in the whole backside of your leg. Let's take one more deep breath. Nice, and then bend your knee and bring both knees into your chest again. Now I'm gonna keep your head and shoulders down. Okay, so when your head's down, press the back of your head into the ground. Bring both hands to your right knee and stretch your left leg out long. Now hold there. When the knee's pulling in, that's hip flexion. Make sure you still have the natural curve in your low back. Take a deep breath in as you switch your legs. Exhale and hug. Inhale, switch, exhale and hug. Inhale to switch, exhale to hug, and then pick up your pace. It's inhale both legs and exhale both legs. Practice pulling that thigh close to your belly without disturbing your spine. So your low back stays light and your low belly is nice and strong. One more time and hold both knees to chest. Now stretch your arms and legs apart from each other. Your arms can go way overhead. Circle around and hug your knees in. Inhale to reach, exhale to hug. It's out, around, and in. Your low back stays light, low belly's nice and strong. Keep gluing your thighs together. Two more, and then pause. Bring both legs straight up in the air. This is the hamstring stretch you just did. Reach your hands up and grab as high as you can, high as you can. Give a little pull while the other leg moves away. And then switch and pull, pull, and pull, pull. Now while your head is down, head and shoulders are down, that's an opportunity again to lengthen your spine. Keep reaching through the top of your head. Keep your hips still. Pull, pull, and pull, pull. Your inner thighs are brushing past each other every time they switch. Now both legs up in the air, glue your thighs together. A slight external rotation of your legs. So when you open, your knees will roll out just a little bit. It's like you're hugging the upper back of your thighs. Take your hands and cradle or frame your bum. So your thumbs are tucked under and your hands, you could lift your hips and put your hands underneath if that works for you. Now start to lower your legs, pull your belly button in and up, and then lift your legs right back up. As you lower your legs, keep your spine still and lift. Keep hugging the upper back of your thighs. Really wanna stay connected to that area. Lower and lift. Inhale as you lower. Exhale, pulls your legs back up to you. Remember, keep pulling belly button in and up, in and up, in and up. Lower and lift. Two more times. <laughs> Obviously the new neighbors have moved in with a couple of little ones you probably hear in the background. Now bend your knees and put your feet down on the ground. Separate your feet as wide as your mat. Open your arms into a T or cactus. Let your knees roll side to side. And 
And now bring your knees in toward your chest one more time. Stretch both legs straight up in the air. Keep your arms open at your sides with palms down. These are called hip or tick tock. Keep your heels glued together. Rock your hips to the right. Your left hip will lift and your legs stay firmly glued together. Come back to center. Rock your hips to the left. And that means your right hip will lift and then come back to center. Keep your thighs glued together so your legs do not rock or shift on each other and press your head and the back of your shoulders down into the ground. And feel here the connection as you tick tock slowly side to side, the connection of your inner thighs to your waistline. It's like your right inner thigh and your left waistline have you know a strong connection to each other and conversely the left inner thigh and the right waistline one more time both sides nice back to center bend your knees and lower uh, roll over to your belly please once you're on your belly press your hips down let your head rest on your hands And when you press your hips down, make sure you're pulling your belly button away from the ground. Okay. And keep your head, your hands resting there on the ground as well. Hover your head a little away from your hands and use your forearms to lift your head and your chest a little bit more. So you're just, you're assisting yourself with your forearms. Pull your belly button in as deeply as you possibly can. Press your hips down and lift both legs. Hold for about three breaths. If it works, you can touch your big toe knuckles together. Or remember the upper back of your thighs that I mentioned earlier. Hug the upper back of your thighs. Take one more full breath. And then lower. Now let your head rest on your right hand and stretch your left arm out overhead. Roll your left thumb to point up toward the ceiling. So that's external rotation in your shoulder. Lift your head again a little bit away from your hand, your right hand, so your forearm stays there on the floor. Press your hips down. Lift your right leg back and up. Lift your left arm up next to your ear and breathe. So you're getting some assistance again from your right forearm to help you to lift your chest. Keep your neck long. Pull your belly button in and up. Spread your toes on your right foot, spread your fingers on your left hand, and reach out through every finger and every toe. Take one more deep breath. And then lower. I'm gonna switch and do this on the other side. Let your head rest on your left hand. Reach your right arm out overhead. Roll your right thumb up toward the ceiling. Now, when your right arm is overhead, you don't need it too close to you, your head. You can have it out to the side. I'm trying to find the place where you're un, you know, you're, you don't want any tension in your neck and shoulder. So find the place where that arm can land, where there's no tension. Lift your head up off of your left hand and lift your left leg. Now keep your head, you know, lifted. Your head is in line with your spine. Work to lift the right arm right up next to your ear. So wherever your head is, you're trying to work to lift that arm up in line with your ear. You're gonna feel that cross diagonal load that I mentioned earlier. The left inner thigh and the right waistline are working strong together. Pull your belly button in and up, take one more full breath, and then lower. Nice. Now prop up onto your elbows into swan or sphinx posture. Now, this is a good assist to help you to find back extension or back bending. If it's too compressive, move your elbows forward and make so that you feel your spine is long and your back muscles are working without any pain. Okay. Hips pressed down, belly button pulls in and up. Make your neck long, double kick your right heel twice to your bottom and then stretch out. It's kick, kick and reach, kick, kick and reach. Now the kicks, again, the movement is to challenge you to keep your hips still. Keep your belly button pulled in and up, kick, kick and reach, 
kick, kick, and reach. Pull your chest forward and in and out. Two more. Make sure you're even. Separate your elbows. Pre um, roll over to your left side. So roll over to your side. Let your head rest on your left arm. Try to get the arm directly above your head and your body in a nice straight line. Flex both feet and lift both legs and hold. Now your top hand, your right hand, use that like a little tiny kickstand. Use it as, as little as you possibly you know, can. Now split your legs so that the top leg moves back and the bottom leg moves forward and split them as wide as you possibly can, especially the top leg. When the top leg goes behind, feel how your, your glute, your, your butt muscle, make a fist with your top you know, hip, your right glute. Flex your feet, spread your toes, and then sit, um, you, once your legs are scissored, try to press the top leg down and the bottom leg up and take about three breaths. Your legs are as long as you can possibly make them. Light touch with this top hand. You're splitting your legs wide and then hugging them toward each other even though they're split. Lovely, come back to center and lower. Let's roll over to the other side and do that same thing on the other side. I'm gonna flip sides, you can totally roll over in your space. Bottom arm extended, head rests on your bottom arm. Both legs lifted. Everything is in a straight, straight, long line. And this is the, you know, the setup of every exercise is the most important thing. So here you get plenty of benefit from, you know, from this. When your legs lift, your head's resting, try to relax your neck. We don't need the help of your neck. You're working here again on your waistline, right? And the outside of your hips. Light touch with your top fingers, split your legs so the top leg moves as far back behind you as you can and the bottom leg comes forward. Make an equal you know, effort in both of those actions. That's gonna help you to keep your hips stacked. So you really don't need this top hand too much if you're stacked, you know, right um, on, your hips are stacked on top of each other. Your legs are very, very long, very, very long. It's almost like I could, if I was there, I had both ankles and I'd be pulling on your ankles that brings a sense of engagement, which is very healthy. Now, press the bottom leg up and the top leg down. So you're hugging your upper inner thighs, relax your neck and breathe deeply. Lovely, and then come back to center, lower your legs, roll over to your belly. One more thing here, bring your, um, if you have your strap, that might be helpful. So bring your strap behind your back and hold on to it with your thumbs facing down, okay? So your palms are facing each other and your thumbs are down. Get a pretty good grip on your strap, a little wider than your body. Press your hips down. Pull your belly button in and up. Lift your head, lift your chest, pull on the strap. Pull really strong, like you're trying to pull that strap apart. You're also reaching the strap toward your feet. Press your feet together. If that works, if that doesn't feel good in your back, makes, um, pretend you have like a little ball between your ankles and you're hugging that little ball. Lift your legs. I'm gonna take about five long breaths here. Make your neck longer by reaching your knuckles toward your feet. Press your thighs together like mad and pull that strap apart. Pull your belly button in and up. These are all your anti-gravity muscles, my friends. Find the back of your body. One more deep breath, the entire backside of your body. And then lower and move your strap off to the side. Press up into all fours, into table, and do a few of those cat cows that we started with. Inhale, chin and tail lift, and exhale as you round. Do that two more times. Hmm. 
hopefully your cat cows feel a little easier now or a little more lively. Now tuck your toes, hips to heels, lift into down dog. Take a couple of deep breaths there. In the nose and out your mouth. Again, in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time, in the nose and out through your mouth. Now walk your feet up to your hands. Forward fold, fix your feet so they're parallel. Hands within between, belly on your thighs. Now bend your knees a lot and reach your arms out back behind you. Sweep your fingers toward the floor and come all the way up and then bend your knees and reach your arms out back. So it's swinging and skiing. Now your spine stays long and your arms are nice and loose. You press into your heels to lift your arms and sink into your feet to bend your knees and let your arms sweep behind. Do about four more. Nice. And then stand tall and let your arms lower down. Grab your strap again. We're going to have that same position that we had on your back. So when we were on your back, we had it behind you, a little wider than your body. Here, I'm going to have it in front of you, a little wider than your body. And pull the strap kind of taut. Separate your feet uh, until about shoulder width. Now, this is a pulling motion, so lift your arms up overhead. Keep pulling the strap like as taut as you possibly can. Bend your elbows, work to pull the strap behind your head, but don't shove your head forward, okay? So inhale, come back up and lower your arms, okay? So we're gonna go through this a few times. Feel tall, so your neck is nice and long. Pull your strap apart as the arms come up. Pull your strap apart as your elbows bend and you move the strap behind you as far as you can. Reach back up and lower your arms. Okay, do that a few times. Now, good grip on your strap. You can feel, you know, you're making a fist basically. So it's a pretty good grasp and that strengthens all the muscles in your wrists, which is very important to help you in plank as well as bone density. So keep pulling the strap apart and get a good snug, um, you know, grasp with both hands. Now the next time the strap is up overhead and behind your head, hold, hold and pull. Turn your toes out. I'm going back to that, that uh, sort of a sumo squat that we did earlier. So you bend your knees, tailbone draws down, waistline's nice and long, lovely. Press back up and lower your strap. Now when we come back here, you can loosen up your grip, take a moment to you know, roll through your neck and shoulders. So you want to feel kind of loose here and then full on engagement as we go through the motion. Pull your strap, stretch it up overhead, pull it behind your head, bend your knees and hold. Three full breaths here. You're pressing your knees apart, drawing your tailbone down, pull your belly button in and up, pull that strap like mad and pull it down as low as you can. Now reach back up, work to come out of it. Reach up, reach up, reach up taller. And then finally let it lower and say, ah, oh. We're only gonna do two more of those, okay? Spread your toes, pull your strap apart, reach it up overhead, pull it behind your head. Good fists and elbows pulled wide and down. Bend your knees, sink as low as you possibly can. Press your knees apart as wide as you possibly can. Pull your belly button in and up like you mean business and take one more deep, full breath. These look amazing. Judy, Joanne, love it. Now work to come out of it slow, slow. Press down into the ground. As you start straightening your legs, straighten your arms, reach up as high as you possibly can and then lower your arms and relax for a moment. You can let your head roll side to side. All right, we're gonna do this one more time. Grab your strap, tight fist, pull, stretch your arms up, be big and tall, bend your knees, bend your elbows, pull the strap behind your head. Now 
everything you have, your full body engagement. Spread your toes, press down into your feet, open your knees as wide as you can, pull your tailbone toward the ground, lift your pubic bone up towards your nose, pull belly button in and up, strap pulls apart, oh, one more full breath. Now work to come out of it, press down slow, down into the ground. Reach your arms up, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep reaching, keep reaching, and then let it go. Lovely. Strap off to the front side. Oh, thank you for turning off that vacuum cleaner. Step forward. <laughs> it was really quiet out here when I started. Left leg steps back into a lunge, bend both knees, stand, and then step back up. Hands on your hips, alternate right leg back, bend both knees, straighten both legs, and step back up. Now, when you do your lunge, try to keep the back heel lifted, and most important, your shoulders stay over your hips. Step back, lunge, straighten both legs, and lift. So start kind of slow. Find your magic spot, bend both knees, press to straighten, and step up. Step back, Bend both knees, straighten, and step up. Now listen up, step back with your left leg. Bend both knees, reach your left arm straight up, a little bit of lift, and then lower your left hand, straighten your legs, and step back up. Right leg steps back, bend both knees. Stay there as you reach your right arm up, a little bit of back bend, bring your right hand down, straighten your legs, and step back up. So it adds a balance challenge. Left leg steps back, bend both knees. Stay there, you're building strength. Reach your left arm up. When you back bend, lift your gaze. It's gonna challenge your balance. Come back up and lift, step up tall. So you go kind of slow, step back, bend both knees. Right arm up, a little bit of lift. back bend, lift your gaze, come tall, hand down, straighten your legs and step up. We'll do one more on both sides. Left leg back, bend your knees, hold this strong position, lift your left arm. Little back bend, if you're feeling really saucy, close your eyes for a moment, come tall, hand down, straighten the leg and then step up. Last one, right leg back, bend both knees, right arm up, little bit of back bend, and come up tall, hand on your hip, straighten your legs and step up. Nice. Now straddle your legs wide, clasp your fingers out in front, knuckles forward, shoulder blades go apart, flip your palms and stretch up, bend your elbows, feel that kind of backward hug, clasp your fingers and reach your knuckles down. Let's do this two more times. Knuckles forward, shoulder blades apart. Flip your palms, shoulder blades lift. Bend your elbows until shoulder blades will hug together. Clasp your fingers, shoulder blades glide down. Do this one more time. Knuckles forward, shoulder blades apart. Flip your palms, lift up, up, up. Open your elbows wide, hug your shoulder blades together, and then clasp your fingers, shoulder blades glide down. Lovely. Now bring your feet in. I'm gonna grab your strap again. Snug up on it once more. With your feet together, tap your right toes out back behind you. Your left knee is a little bit bent. As you tip over, reach the strap forward and lift your right leg. And then come back up tall and tap. Okay, we'll do about eight of these. So your standing knee is held unlocked. You tip forward, reach that right leg long and come back up. So practice here, breathing deeply, first of all. When you tip over, when I engage right away, pull in that strap apart and feel your butt work to lift the leg out back behind you. Remember to keep your spine really long and always make sure you're breathing deeply. And it's a little synchronized, right? Let's go three more times so that as the back leg lifts, both arms are lifting it you know, simultaneously and feel the work in the standing hip and that standing ankle. Whew. 
Remember earlier I mentioned, let's go one, one last time and try to hold for about two breaths, two or three breaths. I mentioned earlier the inner thigh connection on one leg to the opposite waistline. Feel that here, your left inner thigh and your right waistline working to stabilize. And then come up tall, ha, ah, and say ah. Roll your shoulders up, back and down. And let's go to the other side. Okay, so you'll stand on your right leg tap your left toes out back. Every time you come back up, you know, to the starting position, uh, that's, you want to reset, you know, so your standing knee is a little bent, tip over and feel the arms and your leg pulling apart from each other. And I would start kind of a small range of motion to make sure that you feel like you're moving from your center. In other words, your low belly is engaged, your back muscles and your glutes, they're all working and the arms and your left leg move apart from each other at the same tempo. And you'll find that over time, your range of motion, you know, gets a little bigger because it's controlled. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I don't know, my standing ankle's really working today. Two more, especially on this foot. Spread your toes wide so you get this big footprint. Now on this next last one, tip over and hold for about two or three breaths. Work as much, you know, as much as possible to lengthen your arms, pull that strap apart and make the back leg really long. One more deep breath. Yay. And then come back up tall. All right. Now take your strap behind you one more time. I'm going to step a stride position. So let's go left foot forward, right foot back. So when you're astride, this, the front leg is equally further, you know, in front of your hips as the back leg. So in other words, your hips are directly between both feet. It's not too big of a step for most people, about two feet. Let's uh, pull the strap apart again. This time your palms can face back behind you. So your thumbs are pointing toward each other. Pull your strap. Lift your gaze. It's a little bit of a back bend here. Now you're pulling the strap wide apart and moving it behind your body as much as you can. Now fold forward. This is a hip hinge. So you fold forward into what's called a jackknife and hold with your shoulders a little higher than your hips. Both legs are straight and strong, not locked. That front knee, it's easy to lock the front knee. Make sure it's a little bit bent so that you feel strong. Lift both arms as high as you can and pull that strap apart. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then press down into your feet, come all the way up and step up and switch sides. So left foot back, hips are right between both feet. Now you don't wanna be on a balance beam here. I should have said that on the other side. Your feet are um, you know, about hip distance apart. It's like two railroad tracks, okay? Toes forward, reach your knuckles down, move the strap away, and pull your hands apart. That's a lot of work right there. Knuckles down, hands back, and pull the strap. Lift your chest. Keep your neck really long, and now fold out and over like a jackknife, just like a door hinge, right? You're hinging at your hip joint. Your spine is very, very long. You're trying to pull that strap apart and lift your arms high and reach your knuckles back. Take one more deep breath here. Press down into the ground and come all the way up. Great, now bring your strap out in front. Woo. Come down onto your knees, please. Reach your strap will probably go a little wider. This is more of a stretch. Okay, so your right arm up next to your ear and your left arm out to the side. Move your left arm back and pull your, help yourself to pull your right arm behind your ear. So it's a nice stretch. Now you root down strong into your knees. I'm gonna separate my knees a little bit to get a little wider of a base and then lift slightly over a side bend to the left. Take one more deep breath here. Okay. And then come back up, lower your arms for a moment, roll your shoulders up, back and down. 
I think you're going to feel a lot of your shoulders, shoulder stabilizers after this tomorrow. Roll your hip chin toward chest, one ear to one shoulder. Oh, hello, sunshine. And now left arm up next to your ear and your right arm out to the side. You're using the right hand is just is there to help you to pull your left arm back behind your ear. So you start moving your right arm behind you, stay long and reach your left knuckles straight up toward the sky and maybe a little side bend toward the right that would be. Oh my word. I hope that feels as delicious for you as it does for me. Come on up and then lower your arms. Great, stretch your strap out of the way. Separate your knees about as wide as your mat, feet together, hips back towards your heels and land your elbows. Let your forehead rest. Take about three deep breaths here. Now pull yourself forward and do one more hip stretch. This is a deep hip stretch. Bring your knees in, cross your right knee behind your left knee, scissor your feet wide apart and press your hips back. That means your top thigh, your left thigh will probably come up towards your belly. Now keep your spine long, okay? So we're not rounding down. You're trying to pull your chest forward and reach your hips back. Walk your hands over toward the left and crawl your right fingertips out as far as you can. And then try that to the other side, see if that feels any different. Walk over to the right and crawl your left fingertips out as far as you can. Take one more deep breath. Come on back to center, lift up tall and uncross your legs, go the other way. So cross your left knee behind your right and try to cross as high as you can in your upper inner thighs. You gotta scissor your feet as wide apart as possible. So that's a good external rotation through both hips. Drift your hips back and keep your spine long. So if you lift your gaze, it's a good thing to remember your spine follows your eyes most times. So if you lift your gaze a little bit, it's going to help you to lengthen your spine. Now you might like it right here. If this feels fantastic to you, you stay right there. Maybe take a side bend slightly. So you walk over to a little bit of a diagonal. And if you go to the left, you crawl your right fingertips out, pull your right hip back. And then we'll go the other way. Walk over toward the right, crawl your left fingertips out and pull your left hip back. Mm -mm. Take one more deep breath. Make your way back to center, come up, uncross your knees, tuck your toes, press your hips towards your heels, lift into one more down dog here. Now down dog is a fantastic movement, sometimes called pike but that, that's a good um, description. You're making a pike, you know, with your body. Lift your hips as high as you possibly can. Lift, lift, lift. Press your hands straight down and make your spine long by softening your knees. Most people need a little bend in your knees. You can still press your heels toward the ground with your knees slightly bent. Spread your toes really wide Press your fingerprints down into the ground. Take one more deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Walk your hands back to your feet and get your feet flat. Belly is on your thighs. Wrap your arms around your legs. Give yourself a hug. And then bend your knees, lift your gaze so your spine is long. Release your arms out wide to the side, thumbs point up. Use your butt and your hamstrings to press down in order to come all the way up. Stand tall, frame your ears, reach your arms straight up and back, and then lower your arms at your sides. And that, my friends, is what I had in mind today.